I can certainly tell the difference between the Emoji Movie and Ralph Wicks Aaron after five years. Here's, as well as the difference between Smash Brothers, Nick All Star Brawl Multiverses, and the difference between Space Jam and Legacy and today's subject, Ready Player One, based on the novelist name Ernest Klein. And finally, KV on this one, so let's open it up. I will be addressing the book when needed, but I won't be focused on the movie. Plus, by design, expect more pop culture references than usual, so let's get started. The movie opens on Columbus, Ohio in the year 2045, right, with the soundtrack set to Van Halen's Jump. In a vertical trailer park known as the Stacks, this set design actually finds it interesting, as with the Pizza Hut drone. They actually had delivery drones in this time period and brought back the classic logo as well. After that, we introduced the Wade Watts, played by Tyler Sheridan, by the minor screen name Percival. He puts on his VR goggles and set up, which explains how the Oasis can do almost anything. As creator, James Halliday was seen as a visionary in the vein of both Steve Jobs and Willy Wonka. He was even going to be played by Gene Wilder initially, but since he passed away before filming began, the role went to Mark Rylance. On that note, Halliday died without an heir, and his viral video wills will kick off the plot. He left a little golden Easter egg in the Oasis, which grants her finds it $500 billion and control the Oasis. I'm being only over all the connections I see, but I will point out the ones that stood out to me. Example, it's one thing to enjoy Star Trek, it's another heavy funeral flower shaped by like the Enterprise, the Starfleet insignia, and a bearded replica of the Mark IV torpedo from the Wrath of Khan. Anyway, a video will has the message from his avatar and the all knowing, egg being behind three keys copper, jade, and crystal. When the fact it changed from the book is that Percival and everyone else have already been on the hunt for a year before the film's events. That includes who it's his friend H, his one artifact on planet Duna is Gregarious 120, a gauntlet that's a wearer, the ability to transform to any giant robot for 120 seconds. Not a lot of time on paper, but enough for a single fight. Also, when Tensor not mentioning who H really is. We'll get to that when the time comes. I will mention that the copper key is in Delta City from Robocop, and we see Murphy as one of the many cameos in the movie. It's a prize for a race, and naturally there are three speeds to join Percival all are Sonic, Speedy Gonzales, and Tracer Overwatch. The race features everything from the George Barris Batmobile, the Mach 5, the Insect from Mad Max, and the Monster Truck Bigfoot with Ace Behind the Wheel, that last one. Percival's car is a mix of the Ectomobile from Ghostbusters, the Lloyd Dr. Future Trilogy, and Kids Dash from Knight Rider. Our villain is Nolan Sorrento, played by Ben Mendelsohn, who is head of rival company IOI. His army of employees known as Sixers to find the egg, and Mercedes will address later. Do I really like the use of I Hate Myself for Loving You by Joan Jett, and these arc words. First to the key, first to the egg. There's so much going on in this race that I decided to wait for Blu-ray and digital releases, including Kaneda's motorcycle from Akira and its writer, Artemis. I'll also not mention who she really is just yet, and that, that comes later. Do you find the slight gag like of Rex who drives a parking Jack Slayer from Last Action Hero amusing in a movie which co-writer Zach Penn scripted before? He also co-wrote both The Avengers and X2, so his experience of balancing both large casts and spectacle. Anyway, they nearly avoid getting zeroed out by the monstrous version of King Kong, and they head to Ace's workshop for repairs. Princes, I Want to Be a Lover is playing the background music, and Ace is building their own Iron Giant. Don't have much to add about the discourse, hers, hers about the usage here. I'll point out it's actually used by the villains in the book, and its main heroic robot was actually a part on from the Japanese Spider Man series. Very excited to see Takuya in the next Spider Verse. Personal artists converse about the clues first key, mention how this way of multiplayer game was Goldeneye, with up being all job and slappers only. Mine is Smash Brothers. Pikachu, and Saffron City. As his favorite restaurant being Chuck E. Cheese, was that before or after that he moved to the rivals at Showbiz Pizza? After her bike is fixed, Artemis logs out. I'm thankful the cyberstalking subplot was, was cut when Klein covered the script with Penn. Back in the stacks, Way returns home to Aunt Ellis, played by Susan Lynch, and her lover Rick, played by Ralph Innocent. Basically, imagine this Petunia and Brood and Dursley story, you're not too far off. 
Also note that while Wade in the book was more portly and blemished, Ty Sheridan is much more slender and clear-skinned version of character. Not a big deal. Frodo and Sam were in the fifties in the books, but I believe both Elijah Wood and Sam and Sean Astor were younger than that when they filmed the movies. I will just steal the next adaptations as they come. There was a slight uncanny valley looking feel, you know, to the avatars in the film. I do like how the designs are based on the user looks and personality. No different than how someone make their me or their character in World of Warcraft. On that note, Percival visits the curator of the Holiday Journals played by Simon Pegg, walking into Faith by George Michael. Oh, Pegg also has Arthur Morrow, Holly's former partner. Basically, it's our Mr. Wilkinson meets Steve Wozniak. His American accent, this can be dire her flashbacks. Simon, Bubby, regular accent's fine, so why so many people love you? Looking at the files, Percival comes between a meeting between Halliday and Morrow, with the former not being a big fan of rules and games. It's a lot of us over it. Well, that's why they have them, if they don't always make sense. So why Mario gets big from eating a mushroom, but dies to get hit with a turtle shell. Why Sonic can run super sonic speeds, but sinks like a rock in water. Why Pokemon Trainer can walk around the water age 10. Monster goes with their belts, but can't climb a ledge on their own. Percival discovers something he missed. Going backwards. The next day, he, he puts his plan into effect, which gives him the carpet key and the clue of the J key. Artemis closely follows as does H, as well as Daito, played by Moisaki, and younger brother Shoto, played by Philip Zhao. They're collectively known as the High Five from that day forward. This rankles Sorrento and the rest of Lotus IRY, including Finale Xandor, played by Han John Common. She's not been coming actress they really like, and that's because she's a ghost in the MCU and coming back for the Thunderbolts. Sorrento's plan with IOI, should they gain control of the Oasis, is to overload her paywalls and microtransactions. So, not a stretch looking at EA, Konami, and Activision Blizzard. That said, Percival does win money in his account for finding the key and gets the Mecha's Cube, the even paint homage of fellow visionary director, the holy hand grenade from the Holy Grail, and a great X1 haptic suit. There's also an auction for a bomb called the Cataclyst, which will be important later. I also enjoy the use of Stand On It by Bruce Springsteen. So it has his own VR rig, which kind of resembles Palpatine's throne. All that have so many Easter eggs on screen that I find most interesting visually are the trailer stacks and the villain's game chair. Here's Iraq played by TJ Miller in A Tribe of More of the Worlds. This movie is at least better than the 2005 remake of that. Iraq is a mixture of Skeletor and Sorrow Man while he's a dumb muscle. In the book, he's arguably one of the most, not the most lethal or mercenary IY has in the payroll. Hmm. The next clue is being deciphered among the high five, and once it's cracked, they will find the J key. Wade finds a lead, and goes to the archives of Artemis, who slips in disguise as Gore of Mortal Kombat Alien Chestburster. I'm still filming the reboot, I'm glad the sequel's still ongoing. Anyway, Halliday and Moore had a falling out of a young woman named Karen Underwood, who later became Lyra's departed wife. Her avatar is called Kira. The female gale in the Dark Crystal. Puzzle wins a bet with the curator over it even, and with that check out gone on the mantle, he and Artemis have a clue. A date. Hmm. That night, Percival scrolls through the skins of Prince and Purple Rain, Michael Jackson Thriller, for selling his favorite film and character by Guru Balanzai. Good call on that cold classic. However, H warns about this date could be three hundred pound dude in suburban Detroit, and his name is Chuck. We'll talk later. Horace never goes to his date in the distracted globe, and it's great use of New Order's Blue Monday 88. After Saturday Night Fever Dance, Iraq is able to figure out who Parcel really is by listening to this conversation once, and then there's an ambush. Iraq is able to figure out who Parcel or I do like how the avatars explode the coins when they're taken out. Classic. This is a Mecha's Cube to turn back time 60 seconds. May not be a lot, but it's enough time to undo a single mistake. Artemis warns Wade about what's happening, and that IOI killed her father over his dead to get to her. As I kept mentioning, the music is very good. John Williams was considered, but due to scheduling conflicts, Ellen Zavestri got the job. IOI managed to trace Lady's location with the X1 haptic suit order, which is doable. But I have haptics that advanced yet, but could a lifetime. A man in suspicious tattoos is in the stacks looking for Wade when it gets called from Sorrento. In the Oasis, as Sorrento offers him a position IOI with full benefits and takes his salary right off, Wade declines, telling him a fanboy knows a hater. 
He responds by having the stacks born, dismissing the place to get out trash white woman in Columbus. The way his aunt and uncle were neglectful, this drives him off the deep end, and he willingly attack this place because of how many casualties are going in the process. Also, he killed Daito in the book, and I'm grateful the movie let him live. On that note, Tattoo Man actually got him to safety. His name is Rare, played by the character Lauren Spellman. Other is actually Samantha Sam Cook, and we still think she's pretty in with her scars. A couple things. Haynes. The scars are less severe than the book, and holy shnakey, that's Olivia Cook. Short order way means the other movies are high from real life, including H. She's actually a black woman named Helen, played by Lena Waith. While some people had issues with this change, we're actually glad the film was under Avatar. I think it would have been like a repeat of the live action Ghost in the Shell remake if it hadn't. Sam has cracked the second clue and is connected to Stanley Kubrick's A Shiny, and yes, it didn't mention how Kane disliked the film adaptation. Just glad that Halliday didn't take care of seeing Lawnmower Man. All joking aside, the sequence is actually a highlight in terms of both visuals and tone. Major props to cinematographer Genius Kaminsky. Visual effects supervisor Roger Guyot and two editors, including frequent Spielberg collaborator Michael Kahn, where they're due. Much like the Clock of Orange Droogs and Second Space Jam, they had to clear the red table of Kubrick's state, and they said yes. With some teamwork and quick thinking, they were able to get the J key, with only one left to unlock the egg. Halfway through, this just about how does it have the clue, the final key, hmm. and or decides to use Sam to get to Wade, and their hideout is raided. Sam agrees to come quietly, giving them eyes on the inside. The high five of mobile set up in H's van, just in time for the third challenge, when he has knowledge of Nolan's office, including his password that he just leaves on his chair. Hey, I stopped doing that when I was younger than him. The final challenge in Anarch's castle on Planet Doom involves Atari 2600, and it's a complete library of games. Also, if we look closely, that does include the infamous adult games, which tried way too hard to be adult, and not hard enough to be games. Iraq after this or if Ostavox are on the final challenge and they're able to get the stamps access codes before it's too late. Wade also sends out called action with the entire oasis, leading a final battle that spans nearly the entire third act. Kicked off to Twisted Sisters, we're not gonna take it. Here is where I make my biggest confession on this film. The scene was meant to be at selling point, but I actually saw it as a deterrent. I mean on the surface level it looks good and very much like the reported they have one $75 million budget. The problem is not only is so busy, it becomes visual white noise, I don't really feel connected to what's going on. Look at the stampede of Chun Li, Tracer, Lara Croft, Slam Serain, the Bay Ninja Turtles, and Spurs of Halo, and just went, eh, it's there. I stood firm for five years, and at the time, I didn't go. They bet $10 on me, they lost. Granted, some things more fit than others, I was meeting by the Mad Ball Grenade and this line. It's fucking Chucky. Well, there's a PG team, folks. Hope all the teams that saw us enjoy that. As mm. previously stated, I actually don't have as much of an issue using Iron Giant this way, especially to subsequent appearances in Multiverses and Second Space Jam. It's the RX-78-2 Gundam that actually underwhelmed me, and I ironically felt less excited about live action reboot after seeing this, it still is just up to less five years later. Mecha Godzilla, however, was done right by this film and the MonsterVerse. Wade meets up with Sam and wants to get out of Dodge where Sorrento kills her and then shoots Avatar to make sure she does. K.Y. Purposeful had, had to do this in both directions, but still kind of a cheap shot. He does use a holy hand grenade to break through the defenses. One, two, five, three, sir, three. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> Wade determines the answers in adventure but it's not about winning, it's about playing. And Sorrento demands that the last king exchange $50 million or he'll use a cataclysm to bomb the whole planet. Where it refuses and a fight ensues. I will admit the Street Fighter moves, including Hadouken and Growing Talk, which is pretty cool. I'm still keeping an eye on the film reboot. Sorrento activates a cataclysm, taking out everyone but Wade, who only survives because of the extra life from before. Wonder if he also had any save backups. To win the challenge, and Pastor Secret Test a character, Wake is a crystal key and the Easter egg from the Essence of Halliday. As for who he really is, he's about he's an NPC, a non player character with his likeness. Say that not to be insulting, but to be accurate. We close the narration in a way that has Sorrento as the last arrested, more staying on silent partner, and hinting in control of the Oasis. I actually don't mind the furlough Daisy ads, 
and him getting the girl with Sam is a classic ending. I also like the use of whole notes to make my dreams come true to all the credits. So, while this may not be my favorite spoofer film ever, my relationship has changed with it in the last half decade. I used to think both the movie and the book were a little more than YA power fantasy, it still holds true to an extent, but looking again at the post covered landscape, it wasn't quite how it plays out. Given how some phantoms in WB have been the years since, the patrol is actually kind of sweet even though I don't have the same enthusiasm others did. Admittedly, it would not make a bad adaptation to Smash Brothers. Anyways, it did make about $137 million domestically and about $192 million worldwide, and that's $107 million budget. So it's have some audience. Some people liked it, others didn't, and this thing is okay. My final rating is 2.5 out of 4. That'll be all for now. I'll see you all again soon. Take care, everyone. Hmm.